when service failure happens, and it does happen, you need not resign yourself to turning that customer into a detractor. Because if you overcorrect on the recovery, you know what you're essentially doing? You're creating another peak. And if it's a really tall peak, it far eclipses the negativity of the failure itself. And it becomes something positive that people remember. I want to tell you a story that illustrates this concept. It is the best service recovery story you will ever hear. Do I have your attention? And I know it's a true story because it happened to me. It is a personal story. So here's the scoop. My wife and I were staying at a Ritz-Carlton in Florida. We were there because at the time I was working for a large financial services company and they had their big annual shindig for their top salespeople. You know, and you know these things, these are, you know, big, uh, big to-dos. Uh, they, they bring in the CEO, they bring in the board of directors. I mean, you got all the bigwigs there. It's a big deal for these folks. And part of the event, on one night, they have a formal black tie dinner. Now, for guys, it's easy. You know, you just rent the tux. Or if you own one, you just take it out of your closet. But for women, it's a bit more difficult because they need to find the right dress, the right formal evening gown. So for several weeks before we left, before the trip, my wife searched high and low for the perfect evening gown. She finally found it. She found something she was happy with. She got all the accessories. She got shoes. She got some jewelry to go with it. She was all set. She was happy. She was going to look great at that black tie event. So we pack up our bags. And we go down to Florida. We arrive at our hotel at the Ritz-Carlton. We unpack the bags. My wife takes her dress out and discovers that in transit, it got all wrinkled. So she sends it off to the Ritz-Carlton dry cleaning service to be pressed. Well, the next day, the dress comes back. And I kid you not, it's the size of a Barbie doll. <laughs> They shrunk that baby down somehow. I mean, there's no way that my wife is going to be able to wear that. Now, I am not a woman, but to hear my wife tell it, this is the doomsday scenario. <laughs> I mean, it does not get worse than this. This is even worse than showing up at the black tie event and finding somebody wearing the exact same dress. I mean, this is the nightmare scenario. Because for weeks, she searched for the perfect dress, and now the event just days away, she has nothing. Well, so I call down to the front desk, and I tell them what happened. And a few minutes later, I get a call from the Ritz-Carlton hotel manager. And we talk about what happened. And you know what he says to me? He says, Mr. Pico, I am going to take care of this for you. Now, let's just stop there for a moment. How often is it in this world that you hear people take ownership and accountability like that? utter those words, I will take care of this for you. Not only utter the words, but mean them. Not only mean them, but then deliver on them. And boy, did they deliver. Because what they did is they whisked my wife off in a limousine, and they took her to the nearest Nordstrom, where they had arranged for a personal shopper to spend the entire day with her. Picking out a new evening gown, getting it tailored, buying all of the accessories, the shoes, the jewelry, whatnot. And my wife spent the whole day there, and she was happy with what she found. She was really happy, felt good about it. The Ritz-Carlton paid for the entire thing. The limo, the new dress, the jewelry, the shoes, the accessories, all of it. They paid for the entire thing. Pretty cool, huh? Wait, it gets better. <laughs> So we go home, and the next day comes, and it's the day of the event. The event starts at 6 o'clock. It's 5 o'clock. We start getting dressed. My wife puts on the dress, and I hear an audible gasp. So I go over to her, and I say, Rebecca, what's, what's the matter? And she points down to the bottom of the dress and says, John, Nordstrom forgot to take off the anti-shoplifting ink cartridge. So quick-thinking husband that I am, I say to her, well, you know, Rebecca, don't worry about it. If anybody notices it, just say it's like the latest, uh, you know, the latest fashion accessory from the runways of Milan. 
She didn't buy that, though. She didn't buy that. Uh, so what do I do? I call the hotel manager. I tell him what happened. And what does he say? Mr. Pico, I'm going to take care of this for you. 20 minutes later, that Ritz-Carlton hotel manager is up at my front door. He knocks on the door, and I see beside him he has a Nordstrom employee who he summoned to the hotel with the ink cartridge removal device. The Nordstrom employee kneels down, clips off the ink cartridge from my wife's dress. It's perfect. We've got 20 minutes to spare. <laughs> Pretty cool, huh? Wait, it gets better. <laughs> so we go down to the event. And we find what table we're sitting at. And we go and we sit down at our table. And I have my head down because I'm looking at the menu, trying to see what I'm going to order. And I hear clapping. And so I look up. And there at the end of the table, I see the Ritz-Carlton hotel manager and members of his staff clapping, applauding my wife in admiration of how beautiful she looks. I mean, it was like pretty woman come to life. <laughs> Do you remember that scene where Hector Elizondo, he sends Julia Roberts out and to get these new clothes, and she comes back to the hotel lobby, and he's there applauding, standing ovation with his staff? That really happened to me and my wife. That's the end of the story. It doesn't get better than that. <laughs> but here's what I want you to take away from that story, OK? The Ritz-Carlton, they knew the lifetime value of their customer. They knew the lifetime value of me as an executive that would come and stay at another Ritz-Carlton. They knew the lifetime value of the account, the company I worked with, that could have sent many other conferences to that or other Ritz-Carltons. They knew that lifetime value, and as a result, this was an easy decision for them. Spending two or three thousand dollars outfitting my wife, drop in the bucket compared to the lifetime value of that account. And it was the right business decision, because you know what they did? They guaranteed that now, wherever I go in the world to give speeches, I am not telling a story about how Ritz Carlton turned my wife's formal evening gown into the size of a Barbie doll. Instead, I am telling a story about how Ritz Carlton engineered the greatest service recovery in the history of the planet. <laughs> and I just add to the aura and the legend around Ritz Carlton. But one last thing on this, because I don't want you to just walk away like this is an entertaining story. I want you to think about that Ritz-Carlton hotel manager. Think about what was going through his head. At some point in that process, that hotel manager ceased to just think about, how do I make Mrs. Pico whole? How do I fix her dress or get her a new one? At some point in the process, he started thinking, in light of the circumstances, how do I make Mr. and Mrs. Pico feel special. And that's when he must have come up with this idea to go down to the event with his staff and give my wife a standing ovation. And my, my counsel to you is there is nothing that is stopping any of you from going back to your jobs tomorrow and embracing that line of thinking and encouraging your staff to do the same. Not to just focus on the mechanics of the experience, but to also focus on how do I make my customer feel good.